There's been a victory for the uh, Chinese bank Reorient Financial. It's won a suit against Cantor Fitzgerald that sought damages from four of its former executives who left Cantor for Reorient. My next guest was among the employees who were being sued. He's here in the studio to tell us how he feels about it. Right. Well, you, you won. Okay. Yes, did. Yes, right. Did. But it was 12 years at Cantor. Uh, must have been a wrench. And uh, why'd you leave? Oh, well, it was hard to leave. I mean, you know, as you say, 12 years at Cantor. Some of my best friends in the world worked there. People that are like brothers to me. Um, but it was there was a few personal reasons to leave, but uh, primarily it was an opportunity that came along to really take my move to Asia to the next level. Yeah. Well, what is the next level then? I mean, it's uh, four of you left the company, didn't you? Yeah, well, we left to basically build uh, a small boutique investment slash merchant bank uh, with a China focus. Uh, we're backed by the Chinese, by the, a Chinese SOE, and and led by Mr. Johnson Co, a, a prominent local businessman. But you do have global ambitions, and not just restricted absolutely, to Hong Kong, absolutely. aren't Absolutely, absolutely. Now, our U.S. Uh, application for our U.S. Uh, broker dealer license is in play, and hopefully by the end of this year, we'll be into London and uh, possibly Europe. Okay, and New York, I suppose, is what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, do you think that to really make the most out of China, you need to be part of a Chinese company? I think it certainly helps. Um, I think, you know, what we've been able to do is, is pair up with the right people and, you know, try to be that small, lean, nimble, boutique investment bank that works closely with the Chinese as, as they are our partners and basically you know, have a win-win situation for them and for us and our institutional client base. What about, I mean, I know that yours is a small boutique uh, uh, investment house and of course Cantor Fitzgerald is medium-sized, but you know, yeah. what about the corporate culture, how does that differ? Uh, it's, it's different, but you know, when you, when you work with good people, it, it really doesn't matter where you work. Okay. So let's just talk a little bit about uh, more, more people, are they thinking like you in the sense of moving to Chinese companies, maybe there's um, more staff retention, uh, job loyalty, etc. Well, people are looking at it. I mean, over the last eight, I've been in Hong Kong eight years, and, and we've had hundreds and even thousands of people, you know, trying to move this way, trying to move to Hong Kong, bigger opportunities over here. So I, I think that trend will continue. I think, um, you know, it, it can be difficult to find the right partners and the right people. I mean, some of the Chinese banks have tried to find the right Westerners and vice versa. Well, that's Some what brings me yeah. nicely to, okay, I'm not talking about you here, but yeah. what about compensation? I mean, uh, is that equivalent or better? Um, it, I wouldn't say it's better. It, I think it's, it's not about a short-term gain. I think, you know, the, the concept of work somewhere for two years and make as much money as you can is gone. Like, what, what, what made myself move, and I think I can speak for the others, is the, is the long-term opportunity. Okay, and, and that's because you are in this um, business which wants to build here as well. But Absolutely. you know, when we do see, uh, I'm you know, just trying to go on about this corporate culture bit as well. I mean, Western banks, we do find that. I mean, a lot of people sitting there say they, well, they overhire when times are good, and then they overfire when things turn down. Is that the case? Do you think uh, with Chinese banks? I don't think the Chinese are going to overhire. I think I think they're going to go about it a little bit smarter and a little bit more cautiously. Um, and, you know, as you say, the Western banks have overhired and, and they keep going through this cycle over and over again. Um, I don't think we're going to face that problem. Okay, so the court case is behind you now. Yes. We talked about uh, the ephemeral aspects of this, but, you know, you can now concentrate on your job, I guess. Exactly. And uh, that t brings me on to what a gain we've had, 17% on the Hang Seng so far Absolutely. this year. Where do we just go from the here? beginning. It's just the beginning, is it? Absolutely. Okay. Where do we go from here, then? Up. I mean, it's not going to be a straight line. I mean, everybody, everybody panics because the market pulls back a percent or two, but that's normal and, and that's healthy. So we could have a gut check, maybe a 5% yeah, move to downside. And, yeah, that's, yeah, that's normal and it's healthy. I mean, you know, when, when markets go straight up, they come straight back down. And we've had a lot of um, history of that. We've seen that in the past. You need people rejigging their portfolios, buying, selling. You know, you need the volume there. And, and if, if, if there's not volume on both directions, eventually you'll get a crash. Uh, okay, well, yeah, obviously, but uh, if you want to maximize your gains, what do you invest in? <laughs> That's a good question. If I knew that, I'd probably be on a yacht somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very uh, much.